So ladies and gentlemen, Masi Ali Nijad. Thank you so much. I'm very overwhelmed. And to be honest, I want to say that first of all, I dedicate this medal to the brave women of Iran, to my heroes, to the leaders who live inside Iran. They face guns and bullets every day, and they actually saying simple thing, woman, life, freedom. And they're not just fighting for themselves. They're fighting for democracy, dignity, and freedom. They're fighting for whole world. So I dedicate this to the women and men in Iran. Thank you so much. Thank you to Washington Institute. Thank you to... I'm speechless. Last year, Washington Institute gave, uh, gave the award to the richest man in the world. And this year, I don't know how, they picked the poorest activist in the world. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and I'm not used to get that much love. I'm just used to get, you know, death threats, being cursed, and being bullied by the mullahs. Thank you so much for being my family, especially when I saw the flowers, which I'm not going to say the story behind the flowers, <laughs> but you made my day. And I needed that, especially these days, following the news of Iran, people are getting killed, children are getting killed, teenagers are getting killed. Every day I go to bed um, with tears, and you made my day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This is, this is a, a, a tough conversation to have. But before we start, I do want to recognize two people. Um, first, uh, I know that Masi just said she doesn't get enough love, but I'm sure there's at least one person in this room that will protest. And that is the person you saw in our video, her husband, Kambiz Furuhar. Can I ask you? I don't know if you can see Kambiz, but he's there. There he is. And then there's another gentleman. Uh, you saw him in the video as well. He did a sterling job narrating this video. Um, a terrific uh, expert on Iran. I'm delighted that he's here tonight. Karim Sajadpour. My Kareem. brother in arms. Okay, Masi, we have a lot of we have a lot of ground to cover, and I'm I'm gonna I have a lot of questions to ask about you. But first, first, I want to talk about what's going on. Wow. Um, so you have sources that none of us have. What's the latest? I have to say that the revolution, one of the most historical revolution is taking place in Iran, which is being led by women, but supported by men. You know, for years and years, I have been warning about the danger of morality of police, hijab laws in Iran, but the brutal death of Mahsa Amini, 20-year-old Kurdish woman, created a huge anger because, you know, she was not even part of any civil disobedience protest. She was not even unveiled. She was just wearing inappropriate hijab. Can you believe that? All women here, you paid attention a lot to your hair to make yourself beautiful before coming here, no? For such a simple thing, in Iran, women are getting killed. So that's why what is happening in Iran right now, it's a revolution. Yes, it started because of protesting against compulsory job, protesting against the brutal death of Mahsa Amini, but it's all about getting rid of a gender apartheid regime because compulsory job is not just a small piece of cloth when it's in the hand of the Islamic Republic or Taliban or ISIS. It's one of the most visible symbols of oppression. It's the main pillar of religious dictatorship. So that is why Iranian people are getting killed every day, but they made up their mind. They are there. They're taking back to the streets every single day 
to end such a, such a barbaric regime. This is all I can say to you. More than 300 people got killed. 15,000 people got arrested. Schoolgirls are in prison. Teenagers are in prison. But the more that the Iranian regime killed, the more people get determined to end this regime. Yes, this is just the beginning of the end. The end of one of the most dangerous regime, which is called Islamic Republic. Our common enemy, you know, I have to say this, Jews and Iranians are historical friends. Jews came to Iran thousands of years before Islam came to Iran. We have common friends. The great Kurosh Kabir, the great Cyrus. So we are all fighting for the same goal. We want to have a country that Baha'i, Jews, minority, men, women, Kurds, Turk, Baluch, everyone have dignity and freedom. That's all happening in Iran right now. I have heard you use the metaphor that the hijab is the Berlin Wall. Tell us what you mean. You know, not only you heard that, Rob. No, I'm sure. The supreme leader, I hate the word supreme, Ali Khamenei, he heard that as well. For years and years, I have been comparing compulsory hijab to the Berlin Wall. And I strongly believe that if women can say no to the one who tell them what to wear, they can say no to big dictators as well. So that is why I believe that if we get successful to tear this wall down, the Islamic Republic won't exist. Recently, Ali Khamenei actually referred to my comparison between hijab and uh, Berlin Wall in front of the Revolutionary Guards. I mean, definitely he didn't name me because he is scared of my name and he's scared of women. He said, the American agent who compared compulsory hijab to the Berlin Wall, you have to take a stance against him. You have her, you have to take action against her. I was actually very happy in my safe house and I was shouting, yes, he referred to me, finally. My husband said, but did, did you get it? He said to the revolutionary guards, take action against her. So yeah, the FBI moved us to different safe house. But that means that we already won the battle. He actually knows that compulsory hijab is the Berlin Wall and we will end the Islamic Republic. And that's why now they're really scared of Iranian women within the country. They're not scared of me. Believe me, my job is just to echo the voice of Iranian women. And that's why they do everything to shut me up, to kill me, to assassinate me, to kidnap me, because they know that I'm echoing the voice of leaders and powerful women who are trying to tear this wall down, as President Reagan said. Wow. <laughs> no. But I, 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 I have to pursue this. You're here. You're in the United States. I'm not. My body is here. Yeah. Wow. Iranians are here. Chan nafaratun galbatun to Iran alan. How many? How many of you cry every day? How many of you feel that you are there every day when people are chanting zan zan de giazadi? So Rob, my body is here, but my thoughts, my soul, everything is there. You know, when I was a little girl, I remember that. Um, I was a naughty girl, as you know that. And uh, so when my uncles, my aunties, families were like being together, so I was making troubles. My father used to kick me out from the room. And, and to, my mom were telling me that, but you were able to find a window to sneak into the same room. So yes, Iranian regime kicked me out from my beloved homeland, but I'm able to find my own window to sneak into my homeland. My windows are social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I have more than 10 million followers. I'm not an actress, I'm not a model. I have more followers than the mullahs, the ayatollahs all together. So I am there every day. 
So, so that's the answer to the question I was going to ask you, which is, <laughs> it's tough to get a word in here, right? <laughs> which well, is, I let President Macron to, to have a word. <laughs> which is why even here, they would send their agents thousands of miles away to shut you up even here. You must have really angered them. You must be really making your point, really making progress back inside Iran. I strongly believe that they are scared of women who dare to send videos to me, who dare to speak up against gender apartheid regime. Let me just give you one example. You will understand that what they're really scared. The Iranian regime did everything to, to shut me up, to keep me silent. First, they went after the women who sent videos to me. They arrested 29 women of White Wednesday's campaign only in one day, which I felt guilty. And I was like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just stop the campaign. They arrested Sabah Kordafshari, Yasaman Aryani, 20-year-old, 22-year-old, and they sentenced them to 24 years prison sentence, more than their ages, 16 years prison sentence. Immediately, their mothers joined the campaign. They took to the street and they said, now we are the voice of our daughters. So you see, these are the Rosa Parks of Iran. So that didn't stop me, and I said that as far as they are speaking up, I have to give them a voice. That didn't stop me and the campaign. The Iranian regime decided to go after my family. They put my brother in jail for two years. They brought my sister on TV to denounce me publicly. They actually sent people here to kidnap me. The FBI arrested a man with loaded gun in front of my house just three months ago. They made a law saying that if anyone sent videos to Masih Alinejad will be charged up to 10 years prison. Can you believe that? But here you are. The mothers of those protesters who got killed in Iran protest, Puya Bakhtiari, her mother, Nahid Shirpisha, immediately sent a video and says that Iran is a prison for me. You scared of me to go to prison? So she started to be the voice of not only her son, the people of Iran, she's in jail right now. Other mothers joined her, saying that we are not scared of you. So you see now, it's not about me. It's about brave women inside Iran who became the leaders of change. And that scares the regime. Otherwise, they can kill me. They know that it's not about me. There are millions of Masi in Iran. They're more braver than me. So they are scared of women, life, freedom and that's why they want to make me as an example by killing me they want to you know actually kill the hope but they don't know that now iranian women are fearless for 40 years they put the fear inside us now the iranian regime is scared of its own women believe me so, Masi, I, I want to ask you a couple of sort of very serious questions so this is a room of, of active, engaged people, people who follow the news and appreciate the danger that Iran poses. I want you for a moment, imagine that you're talking to a different type of room, a room full of Americans who don't follow the world, ordinary Americans in Kansas and Iowa and Missouri, even New Jersey. Why should they care? Wow, that's a very good question, Why should they Rob. care about what you do, about what's going on in Iran? Why should they support a movement to bring change to your country? Honestly, that's a very good question. None of the journalists ask me. You see these days, I'm everywhere. This is the question. Because Iranians are not fighting for themselves. Iranians are trying to save the whole world from one of the most dangerous regime. Right now that I'm talking to you, Iranian regime send drones to Putin to kill innocent Ukrainians. You know, when Putin went to Georgia, people in America were like, we are not Georgian. When Putin went to Syria, you might, some of you were saying that, we are not Syrians. 
For years and years, anti-Putin activists have been warning you about the danger of Putin, no? Now Putin is in the heart of Europe, in Ukraine. The Putin is not alone. Khamenei is helping him. Dictators around the world, they help each other. And believe me, dictators are more united than democratic countries. From Russia to China to Iran, Venezuela, everywhere. But right now that I'm talking to you, American citizens are in prison. UK citizens, Swedish citizens, French citizens, German citizens, and they're all being used like bargaining chip to get nuclear deal. So you see, imagine a day that all democratic countries get united and downgrade their diplomatic relation with the Islamic Republic and ask them to release all innocent political prisoners. If the, if the democratic countries do not get united to end Islamic terror, believe me, the Islamic terrorists will get united, the dictators will get united, and they will end democracy. They will end us, every single of you. And that's why you should care about it. When Burkini ban happened in France, the whole feminists around the world, they got united. When George Floyd got brutally killed, the whole world got united. There was women's march everywhere. My body, my choice. What is different between the women of Iran and the women of the West? And last thing, I have a simple question. I really want you to answer. If it was not the women of Iran, it was the women in America being kicked out from a stadium, what would have been your reaction? Outrage. If it was not the girls from Afghanistan, it was the girls in America being kicked out from schools just because being girls, what would have been your reaction? What is different? What is different between the girls in Afghanistan, in Iran, and the girls, the women here in the West? This is not acceptable. Women's rights, human rights, it's global issue. And I don't accept when the politicians in the West saying that we don't want to interfere in internal matter, but, not, but by keeping silent or sending billions of dollars to Iranian regime or negotiating with them, you are actually interfering. Because there is a war being imposed on women and men in Iran by Iranian regime. When you go and negotiate with the warmongers regime, you're taking side and you're interfering in internal matter. I want you to stay in the right side of the history with the people of Iran. Thank you for asking this question. So you, you, you just took us into the world of policy. So let me ask you, um, the United States government has recently said that it is shifting, it's no longer emphasizing its pursuit of a nuclear deal. It doesn't say it's stopping, it's just moving away from it. We're getting there. And you have met with senior US government officials. So let me ask you, do you feel as though you are getting the right level of support? Do you feel as though the US government is adopting the right policy? And what more would you like to see the Biden administration do to advance the cause of freedom? in Iran. With your help, we're going to get there. First of all, I have to make the US um, government, Biden administration, to understand that when we talk about Islamic terror, when we talk about the Islamic Republic, when we talk about gender apartheid regime, it should be bipartisan. Doesn't matter whether you support Republicans or Democrats. You believe in women's rights, no? You believe in democracy, no? If not, you care about the safety of Americans, no? So that's why we have to see this like bipartisan issue. Yes, they're shifting the tone. I, I understand that now they're supporting the uprising, but I want them, I want, I'm, I'm coming back from Paris, so I met with President Macron. I actually made him to recognize the uprising as it is, as a revolution. 
I'm not saying that this is going to happen overnight. This is a marathon. We have a long road. We have a tough road ahead, but this is a revolution. So we need action. When they say that, yes, the nuclear kind of, we're not going to negotiate with the Islamic Republic until the, they stop killing people, but this is, we, we don't need empty words. We need actions. First, recognize the revolution. Second, call your allies to recall their ambassadors. Third, we want the leaders of G7 to kick out all the diplomats and Islamic Republic officials who are killing Iranian teenagers and children in the streets. Is that too much to ask? President Biden was the one actually pro-banning South Africa. You remember that? Islamic Republic is gender apartheid regime as well. So I need him to call his, I mean, its allies to ban Islamic Republic from everywhere because Islamic Republic is a gender apartheid regime. And right now, oil workers are walking out from their work. Teachers, university professors, they're actually supporting this revolution. But we need help and support from Western countries. We need actions, not empty words. To be honest, I'm going to actually repeat that again. Many people say that, so you're asking your American government to save Iranians? No. I want them to stop saving the Islamic Republic. Look, um, you know, I think it's fair to say that you're a poster child for Adderall. <laughs> you are a true bundle of nonstop energy. Rob, the Iranian regime called me American agent. How stupid they are. If I was American agent, then I had to support a nuclear deal, no? Do you ever let yourself entertain the possibility that you succeed, that the Islamic Republic falls? We are already, we already succeed. I mean, you kidding me? Iranian government is scared of me. I'm only 45 kilos. <laughs> what does it mean? I don't have weapon. I don't have guns and bullets. They assassinate people, they kill people, they execute people, but they are scared of teenagers in Iran. They are scared of school girls and school boys in Iran. It means that we already won the battles. And for years and years, I mean, as a, as a girl coming from a very traditional family, tiny village, uh, like millions of other students, I was told that I have to say death to Israel as loud as the Tel Aviv can hear us. I was told that uh, we had to say death to America as loud as the White House could hear us. Now, Iranians are saying death to Khamenei as loud as Khamenei hear them. That means we won the battle. For years and years we've been brainwashed that our enemy is outside, America and Israel. But now you hear that people in the streets saying that loud and clear that they lie to us when they say that our enemy is America, our enemy is Israel. Our enemy is right here, is the Islamic Republic. We are going to end this regime, whether the West help us or not. Soon or later, we will end the Islamic Republic. So friends, this is a copy of The Wind in My Hair, My Fight for Freedom in Modern Iran, an absolutely terrific memoir. Not all memoirs are terrific. <laughs> Some are self-congratulatory and just plain boring. This is riveting, compelling, powerful, and it's also here for everyone when they leave our wow. tonight's program, waiting for you outside in the lobby. But believe me, it's not the wind in my hair anymore. It's a storm in Iran. It's a hair revolution <laughs> against gender apartheid regime. 
So friends, before we conclude our evening and I invite you to go to our lobby where we have a, um, um, uh, an array of Persian and Middle Eastern desserts waiting for you, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for all that you do selflessly. You, your husband, everything that you do to bring about remarkable thing in this world, which is to empower and give voice to the women and men of Iran so that they can be free. That is a gift, what you do. Thank you. Can I say and something to that, the young generation here and as well? For that, I just want to say, on behalf, no, <laughs> let me finish a sentence. My God. I love him. <laughs> Kambiz, I have a lot of sympathy for you. <laughs> no, he cannot divorce me. <laughs> so, all right, go ahead. Say what you want to say. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much. I haven't been able to hug my family for 13 years. But tonight, I was like, oh, my God. I hugged everyone. I mean, if you didn't get hugged, just stay with me. I'm going to hug you. <laughs> Thank you so much. But I want to say something to the, because I see a lot of young men and women here. I need you. Look, for years and years, Iranian regime said that America is great Satan, biggest enemy. I uh, received death threats. One of the well-known Basiji, who was featured on New York Times, actually threatened me. Um, Oh my God, he was live on BBC Persian said that I'm going to butcher your tongue and chest and send it to your family. I hire someone to do it in America. So I went to Iran's interest section, Iran's embassy, kind of embassy, in Washington, D.C., to make an official complaint about this Basiji. Guess what happened? They didn't let me in. They said, cover yourself first. I said, you kidding me? Wait a minute. The reason that I received death threat just because... I'm fighting against compulsory hijab. Now you're telling me cover yourself first and then make an official complaint about death threats? I didn't do it. So I practiced my civil disobedience in Iran's interest section. Guess what happened? They called American Secret Service to save themselves from an unveiled Iranian woman. <laughs> you see? They say that great Satan, biggest enemy is Israel, America, but they are scared of unveiled women. I want you to believe in yourself, young women. Call for International Women's March, for women of Iran, for women of Afghanistan. Just remove your hijab. Go to the embassy. Go everywhere that you can and be the voice of your sisters. Be the voice of Iranian women. We can do a lot. And don't forget, together we are stronger. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Masih Ali Najad.